right broadcasting out of the United Kingdom into your homes around the world welcome to my channel you're welcome to subscribe share like the usual stuff and um, yeah I talk about lots of different things and you're welcome to um, follow me if you like but there again some people like consistency so if you like consistency you're in for a surprise because there's no consistency with black bright news I just inform about anything anyway what am I going to talk about today I'm going to add on to the threat of deportation on the 15th of February and the impact it's going to have on those left behind and sometimes when we um, sometimes if we don't give these things enough thought we kind of think oh more people they're being deported they're criminals anyway if they weren't criminals they wouldn't be deported they don't have their paper they're illegal immigrants they're coming they're taking them out of prison they're deporting them they're taking them out of detention centers they're deporting them they're deporting people who are reporting who are criminals so what's the big deal that is the attitude of a lot of people just get rid of all the rubbish they're not doing us any good anyway what good are they to our country what people forget is the damage and the historical context of separating men from families. This is just another example of separating men from families. I have to turn that down, otherwise we're going to be disturbed. Sorry about this, I thought I'd done it. But you know me, I'm not perfect. So, do not disturb me, please, until I tell you to. So. So yeah, we have to kind of think of it in a historical context. Look how long um, black men have been taken away from their families. And this is just another extension of the same thing. And we have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? Somebody um, wrote to me today and they gave me food for thought because she said it's something about the parenting. She said that the parents of um, boys in particular, born in the UK, is not sufficient to make them survive in this kind of culture and in this society. And it made me think, and I thought, hmm, you know, a lot of our Caribbean um, parents, they trusted the education system. When they sent the kids to school, they didn't think that they were getting substandard tuition. They automatically thought in England, it's the best, they speak English, our children are going to be raised well. And when they have that in mind, are they really going to try and sub supplement that education? They're not. Are they going to question that education as to whether or not it's relevant, whether or not it's going to turn them into um, solid human beings, or are they not? I mean, when you think it's over the last five or six years, maybe a bit more than that, they've only just started introducing black history into schools. So these children who have entered into a white system, a white school system, had no knowledge of what was going on before until then. And all they had to rely on was white history white history all that showed was white people and if it did show black people it showed them as servants or slaves nothing else so can you imagine young boys growing up with that kind of education an education that tells you every single day that you were a servant you were a slave and the white people rescued you and that's why you're here today you're here today because we did you a favor We've even got you in our schools and we're teaching you. And all the time, it's, it, they were being indoctrinated. They were mis, not even indoctrinated, but miseducated. And the parents allowed them to do it. The parents did not train their boys to be good husbands, good fathers, good partners solid workers i mean some of the mothers they they used to tell their 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 sons oh look for a woman who's got a good job and who's got her own home and then you'll have a place to live so most of the black brits not all 
grew up sponging off of, of black British women. Because only when white people took them on, they couldn't do that because white people knew their worth. But when you think about black people and how they were raised and their history, they didn't have much worth. And so what happened was a lot of those young boys grew up leaving their mother into a parent's home. You'll find, I'd be, I, I don't want to say there's none, because of course there has to be a few who left their mother's home, went and bought a house or went and got a place and was able to bring a woman into that place. How many of them were there? So we end up with boys who have not been raised properly by the school system. They haven't been educated properly by their parents. And when I say educated properly, I'm talking about in the way of life. And to, so that they don't become criminals, because what used to happen is they'd go and live with um, women, then they'd fall out with the women, they end up with their mum, and then their mum makes demands, and the girlfriend makes demands, they end up involved in petty crime, and it goes on from there, and they end up on the criminal system. These are all children or generations of the Windrush. And what is happening now, and then because of that, because of the lack of... Um, preparedness for the society, they end up either in jail or the mental institutions. Sep regardless, they're separated from their wives, their mothers, all the females in their lives and their children. So what happens then? Then you have this chartered flight. Who's going to scoop up all these black Jamaicans, whether they're Jamaicans or not, but apparently it's headed for Jamaica, so I'm assuming they're Jamaicans. So they're going to scoop up all these Jamaicans, and Jamaicans tend to usually provide for their women. And they're going, and their families, and they're going to scoop them up and ship them off and separate them from their families. The thing is, you don't have to worry too much. They don't, the police, that they don't worry about the Brits because they know they've already damaged the Brits beyond repair. The majority of Brits, they've damaged them. The, the majority of black British men are damaged. Not all, of course, not all, but the majority of them. But you do have those, you do have those ones who, whose parents instilled in them values, worth and how to be a man. My daughter is married to a very good man. Good job. He provides. They, they work together. And they, they've built up a family. Two sons. The son is 18. Just turned 18. No interaction with the police. How did they do it? What was it about their parents that enabled that my daughter's husband or my son-in-law, to produce a solid family. And she's been with her husband since she was 16. She didn't marry him at 16, of course, but she was with him from she was 16, and I think they got married when they was in their 30s or 40s. And they have two boys. So there was something in how the mother instilled in the child somewhere, even if she wasn't instrumental in all his decisions, whether or not he decided, OK, I'm not going to listen to my mum. I didn't have a good role model. I am going to do this for myself. Some people, they actually um, look at themselves and decide this is the stance I'm going to take for myself so I can be somebody who people respect. And then you have on the other side where you have young men where their mothers will molly coddle them, give them everything they want. They've always got a roof waiting for them. And so they don't have to worry about how they treat women. They don't have to respect women. And all they do is run from one woman to the other. They don't have nowhere to live. They can't live by themselves. They, not, a lot of them don't have any homes. And so they are subjected to 
disrespect in a lot of cases. And sometimes women just say, I've I can't be bothered. I'm not, I'm not your mother. I'm not here to look after you. If your mother's not with you, that's not my problem. But a lot of black British men, with all due respect, like I said, not all, and you know, I don't wish to be disrespectful, but a lot of black British men are looking for mothers in their women. They're looking for women to rescue them. They're looking for women to help them do whatever, give them pocket money. I mean, some big grown hard back man that asked for money for boss fear. You know what I mean? I don't have boss fear. You can give me some boss fear or train fear. I ain't got no train fee. You got any money? Can you send me some money? Can you put my some money in my account? Like having a account is a big thing. It's one of them that's, you know, it's like them having a account, you know. And it's like it's a big thing, you know. Oh, I've got an account. Do you want my account number? Hey, you can put some money in my account. Yeah, just put £3.50 in my account. It's like £3.50. freaking fifty. What planet? Three fifty. I'm just like, it'd be better if them did say it for Artie or something. You know what I mean? £3.50. I ain't got enough for bus fare, so I just need to top it up. So if you put £3.50 in my account, I'll be all right. And I'll pay it back. I promise I'll pay it back. That's what mothers have raised. And so it's very, very sad that the state of black men in Britain is that and the only few good black men we have which are Jamaicans or people from the Caribbean they're swooping them off swooping them off leaving the women who were depending on them or who helped they helped build up a family with them they had somebody to help support them pay their bills they're gone swooped up the thing is, is that if they're taking people from detention centres, I guess um, they wouldn't be around anyway. But a lot of those men, they have an account or they'll say they'll provide for their women and they'll say, look, you know, I mean, I mean, I put down some money and, you know, just take out what you need. There are men who provide that way, who put their money aside and provide that way. So even if they're in prison, their wives don't have to worry. But, not in prison, because they've probably been in prison for years, but the detention centre, who they've just been scooped off. And like that guy yesterday, Mash DC, he, Mash, Mash Up DC, or whatever his name was, I mean, he said that he was just scooped off. His family didn't even know he was put in the detention centre. So, you know, young black men in the UK, you, you must resist being looked after you have to resist being looked after you have to learn to stand on your two feet because what's happening is you're going to be a you know a victim of the system where well, you already are a victim of the system but at least don't let that fo um follow your children you've all got young children you need to teach them to be independent you need to teach them to be self-sufficient you can't have them growing up like how you grew up. So you didn't know, your parents didn't know that much. They, they were gullible and they just fell into it that, you know, England is filled, you know, paved with gold and the systems are wonderful and everything. So nobody really was paying attention. They just thought, okay, we're here, we can get a job, we can get a home. And they didn't want one. They didn't. They weren't concerned about what was happening to the children. They let the system take care of it. And I'm not talking about the care system. I'm talking about the education system. The system that is supposed to lift them up, elevate them, prepare them for jobs, prepare them for a, a, a for earning a good living, producing them into responsible men. Mm teaching them properly so that they have um, good role models. But that didn't happen. So, um, I don't even know. Um, 
I said children all over the UK are not prepared for the precarious future that befalls them. Nobody taught them how to avoid getting a criminal record. And a lot of people say it's common sense. But I think that the system how it is, it is so polite. It's so nice. Sometimes you don't even realise when you're being chastised. Sometimes you don't realise that something is really that dangerous or has that bad impact on you because of the um, this diplomacy and the way it's done with a smile. I've seen, you know, when you watch those programs, um, uh, I should have written this down, but you know, when I ad lib, I'm not thinking. But you know, when you watch these programs where they capture somebody at the hotel, at the airport, and they put them into a room and they'll say to them, you know, we realise that you might have come over here and you might not have your papers, but, you know, you may have somebody who you can talk to and somebody who can help you. And there's something about the way a white person speaks that makes you trust them if you're naive, if you don't know the culture. So these people are coming into the country and these um, officers are polite and nice and say look we can help you one guy said you know if you tell us you know who you're working with you know we can make it easier for you that time and belly full of drugs how can you make it easier for for him and he's a mule and he's responsible for everything in his stomach but the way they speak and then if he doesn't want to tell them you see them start switch look you know we've told you you've got to you've got to help us and then all of a sudden you see the other side of them they get all devilish and nasty. But when they want something sweet as pie, mate, sweet as pie. So a lot of um, the young men are made to believe it's OK to have children with different women and not to look after them and allow the system to look after them. These are how young men have been brought up of this of of, of these um, windrush. My head's gone all over the place. Probably working too hard today. Use my brain too much at work. But yeah, um, they're made to believe it's okay to depend on women. They're made to believe that because British women has a job, it's okay to sponge off of them. They're made to believe it's okay to live with their mothers and then different women and then their partners and hardly any of them secure a place of their own. Um, yeah, and uh, made to believe it's okay to get married in their 40s and 50s. Made to believe that they didn't have to save for a rainy day. Because if the system didn't look after them, there would be some women that would look after them. Many, many mothers of Caribbean parents overprotected their sons and never taught them how to provide for a wife and a woman, children or a home. So the majority of them just... Well, they just hustled their way through, really. The same British charm. I mean, black British men, they have the British charm. Look at Luke T. <laughs> They've got that charm, mate, I tell you. Anyway, many of them become victim-minded and blame it on the system or someone or something else. Um, and if that is the case, there would be no black men who would provide for their women and make good husbands. So it's not just the system, it's the, it's the circumstances of how individuals were raised. Some mothers, it's African mothers, they are so hell bent on education. That's why a lot of Africans are up there, you know. A lot of Africans are up there because the mothers, they instill on them education. If you don't get anything else, get your education. But the Caribbean mothers, they'll say, oh, yeah, get a good education. But it's not pushed. You know what I mean? It's not pushed as much as the African culture. Um, I know one black guy. He he was married to a white woman. She never worked from the, the from the date they got married and she wasn't working before. He, he married her from she was on the dole. Then he provided for her because he's a worker. And then he left her. Well, she, he didn't leave her. She ended up having an affair with somebody else after he was providing for her, you know, and they had three kids. And then he meets another white woman. 
she don't do she doesn't do nothing either so he ends up um, looking after her as well I'm just saying it kind of goes from one extreme to the other what went wrong there what went what went wrong with um, his mother telling him that it's okay to provide for a woman but you know the two of the you have to pull together okay if she's got young children that is totally different but when she's got hard back 18 year olds and above and she's not working and you're still going out to work and she's not working what is that that is low self-esteem you should be saying get out there get a bloody job but it's that same mentality isn't it that's why i said our black our black british men are damaged man not all of them so some of them they're safe some of them they came through okay but the majority of them they don't have no no um oomph no no backbone you know they look it's almost look like they look for the easiest route out they're not responsible they don't want to be responsible for anything so they look for the easiest route out how are these how are these men these boys who are now men in their 40s and who are likely to be deported how are they going to cope in a place like jamaica where jamaica has a totally different attitude you have to work for what you get it's not handed to you on a plate and if you want a woman you have to bloody work for that how are they going to manage? They're not. So the remnants of the Windrush generation have found themselves in a country they believe they were entitled to live in, brought over by their parents, grandparents, only to find they're being targeted by the police and the criminal system to find any reason to deport them to a country they've never lived in. What seemed like a privilege, i.e. free schooling, the dull, made parents lazy the assumption that british school would educate them to a high standard and if they weren't working the doll would look after them some you have some black parents who have that mentality you know teachers teach what they want children to learn until relatively recently schools did not teach black history and it still does not teach a black boy how to grow into a successful black man they don't show them role models i mean recently more, more recently you get your little marcus garvey but when they're talking about black history what is it again reinforcing slavery showing black men in a subordinate role how is that going to elevate the black boy in school how is that going to make him feel as though he can become something Schools teach black boys how to fail. And if they do not have supplementary edu education or intelli intelligent parental input, that is what happens. Marcus Garvey is outdated. I mean, for young boys, talking about Marcus Garvey, yeah. You know, for, for the older generation, they can relate. The young boys can't relate. Who is the modern Marcus Garvey? Who is the modern, who is the modern role model? Mo the, getting all tongue-tied. The modern leader. Who is there to lead and show young black boys how to behave, what to do, how to defend themselves, how to navigate the job system? I was watching this um, video the other day and this guy, went, this boy went in for a job and he said, yeah, man's got, man's got skills. Man's got skills. That's what he's saying in an interview. The mother hadn't even trained him how to go for an interview. Man's got skills in an interview situation. They're not taught how to interact socially. So these these young men, they're walking they're walking time bombs. I mean, honestly, 
there has to be somebody out there. And what, what is sad is that you do get these little groups who say they're doing these little black schools and this and that. But they're all funded. And as long as they're being funded and they're getting some recognition, it's kind of self-serving. It's not really for the young black men. It's because they're getting funded as opposed to these men who are super intelligent. We've got some super intelligent black men who would put on something for these young boys that does not depend on funding from a government and teach them the social skills, teach them how to avoid crime. Since a lot of these young boys don't have father figures, there should be these black men who've got their PhDs and goodness knows what else, instead of going lecturing around and, you know, getting the paycheck, do something about these young boys who haven't had that. Direct them. Oh dear. So the young boys feel betrayed by the system. They feel betrayed by their parents. Um, remember some of these, some of them have been abandoned, some of them have been fostered, some of them have been neglected, some of them have been abused. We don't know what people go through. We don't know what these young boys go through and it's perpetuated in the system. And they all find themselves in courtrooms with you know, for carrying weed, petty driving offences, drug dealing, robbery and murder. Remember that boy who um, who didn't realise how important it was to attend a jury service and he overslept and he didn't make it. And they was ready to, I don't know if they was ready to, they weren't going to put him in jail, but some big, big prosecution thing damaging his reputation. This is a boy who he had to have a clean record in order to be on the jury. Young black boy. Nobody told him the importance of um, attending the jury. Yes, they send you all these stacks of paperwork. But who is there to say to him, where was his mum? Maybe she doesn't even know. But where was his mum to say, look, son, you're going to jury service. This is mandatory, it's a legal requirement, you know, um, and read read it with him. The, the, the um, documents, make sure he presents himself properly, make sure he knows what he's doing, what to expect. Where was the person to do that for him? Another young boy gets a criminal record for absolutely nothing. There was such a hoo-ha about it because there had been white people who hadn't shown up and they didn't get prosecuted. And so his, his um, they dropped the prosecution and he did some kind of voluntary service and he had to teach um, other black boys or other young people about the importance of attending jury service. But my point is, is that these are the type of things our young boys need to know. There needs to be somebody to school them on these types of things. What to do when you're going for a job. How to, how to, how to conduct yourself when you're interacting with different people. But there's no one to tell them that. And a lot of them don't have the common sense to know. So... Um, from time immemorial, black men were separated from their families, not allowed to raise a family because the colonists knew that a family without a father would be a vulnerable father, would be a vulnerable family. Without a male breadwinner, young sons were forced to look after their mothers and ended up resenting women and trying to get back at women and trying to do what they could for their mothers. And many mothers encouraged their sons to find women to look after them. Yeah, you do. You get those mums that say, you know, just find a woman who's got a house and a job. That's what they say. Say anything. Try, try, try and wheel them in. Poor unsuspecting woman thinks the boy likes her. No, he's just looking for a roof over his bloody head. So it's dread. So you may find it is only the relatively educated sons who have been protected from deportation or from the criminal system. 
It is important for parents to teach their children rules of law, their human rights, and who promoted a good education. I mean, parents have to do better, man. They have to do better. With, you know, and there's no excuse, even if you're uneducated, there's no excuse. I'm not saying you, you, you rely solely on the internet, but you can back it up and just find, you know, what else there is. But, you know, if you want to find out anything, and parents need to get more involved with their children, because otherwise I don't even know what's going to happen. So on the 15th of February, I don't know who's going to be on that flight. I know there's going to be a lot of women and families left behind without a male role model in the home. The few good ones that are left, that's why they pick on Jamaicans, you know. Because they know that the Jamaican family, especially where there's a man, a woman and child together, regardless of his philandering, they're provided for and it's a strong unit. That's what they want to break up. That's why they're sending them over. That's why they're picking them up and shipping them out. Just my opinion. What can I say? It's a hard world. But do what you can for other people. If you're reasonably educated, just, you know, take a boy aside and talk to him, find out what he knows from what he doesn't know. A lot of times we take these things for granted. We assume young people know. We assume it's natural for people to know certain things when it's not. People need to be taught. Some of these kids are just surviving. They're surviving on the streets. They're surviving every which way. And they're too embarrassed to tell their, their school friends. They're too embarrassed to tell their teacher. They're too embarrassed to tell anyone what they know from what they don't know. And so they just kind of fight their way through life. And these are, this is the outcome. And they can't keep fighting their way through life because God forbid, you know, the outcome of how it is today. How is it going to get better? That's all I've got to say for now. I'm not going to waffle on any longer. If you like what I talk about, you can always share, subscribe and whatever. That's all. Bye bye.